In this time of isolation and uncertainty, while we're protecting ourselves and each other from COVID-19, it's important that we care for our mental health as well. People may develop anxiety because of the coronavirus outbreak, which can lead to feelings of nervousness or preoccupation with worrying thoughts, difficulty sleeping, and even physical symptoms like hyperventilation. With me to talk about some ways that we can maintain mental balance and stave off anxiety during this disruptive time is psychotherapist Jody Amen. Jody has over two decades of experience as a therapist and is the author of four books on overcoming anxiety. Jody, thank you for joining me. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me here. You're on the front line of the COVID-19 crisis as a mental health professional. What are you noticing? Well, Ryan, you know, this is a context for fear and anxiety and regular people are feeling it right now. This is not about mental illness. It's about a regular human response to this kind of uncertainty that's out there. And there is a lot of uncertainty and that's what people are responding to. But what should people do if they feel out of control? Well, it's important to remember the things in our world that make us emotionally well and bring that into our daily life now, and we can do that. The first thing I want you to think about is routine. Now, our routine has been disrupted because we're all, state, we're all out of our routine that we usually do. And so it's important to reclaim that and create routine in your day. Go to sleep at the same time, sleep eight hours, wake up at the same time, eat at the same time each day, have time to work and do chores, have time to play, and have time to exercise. Exercise is gonna release some endorphins, but also it makes you feel more confident, more empowered, you know your skills, you feel stronger, and it's gonna really help you trust yourself to get through this hard time. Also make time in your day for laughter, for positive messages, for fun and games. That is so important, and it's not something that we have to forego right now. That is definitely something that we could include in our day anytime. And the last thing I want you to think about is humans thrive on having purpose. And that's another thing that's been disrupted right now is our sense of purpose. So make sure you have something in the day that makes you feel like you mattered today. Like do something for somebody else, help people in your family, reach out to somebody. If you have no projects whatsoever and you're like, I have nothing, learn something new. Go on the internet and find something. You know, everyone's got like that harmonica buried in the basement and learn how to play. Uh, do something with your time and you will keep yourself feeling strong and ready for anything. Great advice for any time, but even more important right now. How can we help our older relatives stay emotionally well during this threat and isolation? This is really important, isn't it? To try to help our older relatives feel connected when there's so much out there having them feel disconnected, be different at risk, at threat, and then alone. And so it's important not to visit them or be close, but to go into their driveway and have them speak to you out the window. If they have capacity for video chat, video chat them. Let them into your life and into your day. Everybody wants to feel part of something. And with this isolation, we have to really go out of our way to help them feel that way. Let them know we're thinking about them and that we love them. Everybody needs that, actually. How should people talk to their kids about the coronavirus? I think this is important for all of us is to find this balance between understanding that this is very serious and something big's going on and that's why we have to stay home so they understand why they're losing the things that they're losing, but also not be exposed to all the doom and gloom that would really be too heavy on their little psyches right now. You know, they really are going to look to you. If they see you really stressed out, if they see you really tense and anxious about it all, if they see you watching the news all day, then they're going to feel that too. So it's important to be that model of we can handle this, we're adaptive, and it's going to be okay. So they need that confidence. They need to learn how to see that in a situation, and they're going to have that their whole lives to help them get through hard times. Do you have any final advice for people to help them maintain good mental balance as we all try to get through this? You know, stress and anxiety is, is 
quite regular for us to be feeling in these uncertain times, so there's nothing wrong with you. But that doesn't mean that there isn't help out there. There is ways to cope with it. There is ways to decrease it. And most therapists that I know, maybe almost 100% of therapists, are making their services available on the phone or online. So it's not like you can't get out to a therapist right now. We're absolutely available and have openings right away. And so you don't have to wait. If you're struggling, you don't have to say, do I have an anxiety disorder or not? Do I deserve to get help? If you're struggling, it's okay to get help. Help is out there. And you might only have to meet once or twice to just know how to think about what's going on and help yourself feel better. Psychotherapist Jody Amon, thank you so much for being with me today and sharing your insights and very encouraging words. It's been a pleasure, Ryan. Thank you. For more resources to help you and your loved ones maintain good mental health during this troubling time, head over to our website wmht.org slash headline. Take care of yourselves and each other.